Yeah. Analytics off the chain, all the channels not the same. Jake and Kyle, you know the name. Headline of nation, we running the game. Yo, what's going on, Headliner Nation? Kyle back with the Fantasy Headliners, and I've got your week two tight end and start video here for you. And ladies and gentlemen, if you're new here to the Fantasy Headliners, or maybe you forgot from prior years, in our start and sit videos, we always go over the accuracy report from the prior week. That's right, we will go through that entire report for you and talk about who we missed on, who we hit on, and this year for the tight end position, that threshold is eight half PPR fantasy points per week. Last season, to be a tight end one, you were right around nine fantasy points per week, and that was with Travis Kelsey averaging 14 and Darren Waller averaging 11. So you know some of those scores on a weekly basis were not good. So we dialed it back just a little bit, and we went to eight fantasy points this year. And again, to be a hit, if I list you as a start, you have to be eight or more points. If I list you as a sit, you have to be lower than eight points. Vice versa, for you to be a miss. If I list you as a start and you score less than eight points, you're a miss. Same thing, if I list you as a sit, you score eight or more, you're also a miss. So don't forget all of that in our accuracy report. And we're taking a quick look here real fast. From last week, it was not that great. 64%, you know that I shoot for 70 or more every single week. But like I mentioned, I, I started a few too many tight ends last week. Uh, I, I just, my process last week was week one, led, to me, led me to believe that we might have a few extra guys that could find the end zone and get over those eight points. I was kind of compensating for that there, saying, oh, touchdown. So last week, my process, I kind of got away from what I normally do. I'm back to it this week. Got to go with what has been working in the past. Goddard, Everett, Higgy, Higby, all hits for me last week. Rob Gronkowski, obviously the big miss, and we'll talk about that more in a second. Johnson and Akins were also misses as well, but that's all right. We're going to break all of that down now. So ladies and gentlemen, I also need to remind everybody that we have a special giveaway for the month of September. That is right. And the way to get into this giveaway, you got to download the Prize Picks app, sign up for your free account, code word headliners, and then deposit a minimum of $20. If you do that, we're going to put you in a drawing to win, or th win this package. It's a signed Justin Jefferson jersey, a Manscaped perfect package, and then a Trevor Lawrence rookie card. And again, all you got to do, download the Prize Picks app, uh, sign up for a free account, code word headliners, and then deposit $20. Ladies and gentlemen, enough of that. We got to jump into it. Let's go ahead and move into all the action for week two. Thursday night football, the New York Giants at the Washington football team, and maybe Evan Ingram will be back this week. We don't really know. I mean, a couple weeks ago, he was practicing, ready to go, and all of a sudden one day, nope, he's going to miss time. So how much time is he going to miss? Not sure at this point. Evan Ingram, Caden Smith, Kyle Rudolph, they're all sits. Talked about in the wide receiver video, I do not like this matchup against Washington this week, and I just don't think this is a team that's going to perform well enough to get any of these guys towards that start mark. On the flip side with Logan Thomas, did I had him as a start last week, had him a little bit lower in the rankings, but what I needed to see was what's going to happen with front right Fitzpatrick being the starter now. Well, it doesn't really matter anymore because we're moving to Tyler Henneke. Now, Tyler Henneke, he's not Ryan Fitzpatrick. All right. He's not going to be completely launching the ball down the field on a whim. I do think he could start looking to Logan Thomas a little bit more than maybe what Ryan Fitzpatrick did. So we're going to have Logan Thomas a little bit higher in the rankings this week. For the Cincinnati-Chicago matchup, not a whole lot to see here. CJ, who's your mama? Drew Sample, not going to be going with either of these guys right now. Way too many wide receivers and Joe Mixon making a big impact in the passing game last week. For the Chicago Bears, though, Cole Komet. We are going to go with Cole Komet. I mentioned it in the waiver wire video. Jake and I love Cole Komet. We even had him in the draft guide as being a breakout at the tight end position, but we were both worried about Jimmy Graham. But Cole Komet was the guy last week. 
he saw the majority of the snaps, he saw the majority of the targets, and he was the tight end that they were looking to. I'm going to put him as a start, really low end, probably tight end one-ish, high tight end two for me, but in this matchup, going up against Cincinnati, probably going to have to throw it a little bit. Both of these teams giving up quite a bit of points last week at the wide receiver position. Um, probably going to have to throw it. Both of these teams very dynamic in that area. Obviously, against the Rams, Chicago weren't, wasn't that great. But because both teams still probably going to have to throw it, Cole Komet is a good bet to hit those eight points this week. For the Houston-Cleveland matchup... Jordan Aikens, looking to be a big miss on my part so far. I really like Jordan Aikens' ability to play out of the slot. One of the best tight ends at doing that last year. And with Darren Fells being gone, I really thought that he was a guy that could seed more. But he wasn't the receiving option at the tight end position last week. Jordan Aikens was actually used more as a blocker, which is not the way that they did it last season. And now Farrell Brown is kind of being looked at as that receiving target. This is something to keep an eye on. I'm going to list them both as sits right now, but I want to see how this plays out. Tyra Taylor is definitely a guy that loves to target the position, but... Is it going to continue to be Brown? Could Aikens end up coming back in the mix? Will they not need to block it? I don't know. It's something that we're going to have to wait and see. For the Cleveland Browns, David Njoku, who I talked about on the waiver wire video, not a start for me this week because Cleveland could get out in front of Houston big and early and not need to throw it as much. But Njoku, while there's no OBJ, couldn't end up being a guy that has some big playability that we could stream for a little bit longer. Los Angeles Rams, Indianapolis Colts, and for the Rams, I talked about it with Tyler Higby. Obviously, no Gerald Everett this year, and that was kind of the first cue is to we got to get back on that Tyler Higby train. Very disappointing last year. Obviously, we talked about that a lot last year, and I was worried last year, but I turned it around this year. Higby is a guy that can play and play well at the position. So now let's see how many snaps. 100% of the snaps last week. That is right, Tyler Higby, 100% of the Los Angeles Rams snaps last week. He's on the field the entire time, big target potential every single week. Absolutely love what he could end up doing. For the Indianapolis Colts, we're going to go back to Jack Mother and Doyle this week. Not Mo Alley Cox, Mo Cox, Mo Problems, as we like to call him around here. For Indianapolis, last week, Chicago, going up against this Los Angeles Rams defense, utilized Cole Komet quite a bit, and Komet saw some success. With these wide receivers not being the greatest bunch in the world and a tough secondary for Los Angeles, let's take a look at Jack Doyle to be a guy that Carson Wentz looks to quite a bit this week. Buffalo and Miami, and Dawson Knox is my boy. Absolutely love me some Dawson Knox. Right, my boy Chris Chouse, listen, big Buffalo fan. He was clamoring all offseason, wanting, wanting them to go out and get a tight end. And I said, bro, I like Dawson Knox. Well, it looked like they tried to get him involved last week. Now, the problem is, is they have so many wide receivers that I don't think Dawson Knox is ever going to be fantasy viable unless somebody were to go down with an injury or miss time. Then at that point, maybe look at him. But he is worth keeping an eye on. If there's any injuries at the wide receiver position, Knox is going to become a guy that we need to get off the waiver wire right away. For Miami, taking a look at this team, and Mike Gusecki looked awful last year or last week. Only two targets last week, and now we're going to get Will Fuller back. So we're going to have Fuller, Waddle, and Devontae Parker. Miles Gaskin saw, I believe, I think it was six targets. I'm, I'm forgetting offhand right now. He saw six targets in the passing game. So there's not enough room for Mike Gusecki right now. I'm off the bandwagon until I see it. Johnu Smith and Hunter Henry, at some point this season, they're going to start putting up some big-time points. But also one thing we saw last week is maybe Hunter Henry is still kind of working his way back from that AC joint sprain that he had earlier in the year. And that's why I said that I wanted to give him the sit last week because I thought Johnu Smith was going to see a little bit more of the time. We ended up hitting our prize picks over with him last week, which was absolutely great. And I like him again this week. Another start going up against the New York Jets. I'm going to give Hunter Henry another week to see if he is fully healthy. So let's go John New at the tight end position again. For the New York Jets, Ryan Griffin, Tyler Croft, just I'm not, see, I'm not seeing enough consistency at this point right now. I'm going to have to see more from Zach Wilson, and he's going to have to look these guys way more often. 
San Francisco and Philadelphia. We definitely got George Kittle as a start. There's not really a whole lot to say there. Jimmy Garoppolo should be back at quarterback again this week. Trey Lance did come in, throw a touchdown pass, looked pretty good. I don't think he's going to be taken over as a starter anytime soon, but George Kittle is still going to be a start for us. And we're going to go back to Dallas Goddard again this week. Yeah, Zach Ertz is seeing some targets, but he's not seeing as much time on the field as Dallas Goddard is. And Goddard looks to be firmly cemented as kind of that red zone weapon this week against San Francisco. I'm going to go with Dallas Goddard to potentially find the end zone again and see some decent volume. I mean, last week, Darren Waller saw 11 targets in the first half alone. So balls to the Waller. You're still in our lineup every single week. For Pittsburgh, Eric Ebron, Pat Fryermuth, there was nothing in that game last week that led me to believe that either of these guys are going to be breaking out anytime soon. They're going to want to get the running game going with Najee Harris. You've got Juju. You've got Deontay. You've got Chase. I just don't see either of these guys making an impact. I think one is going to have to go down with an injury before they're going to be able to really start looking at just one guy for targets. Right now, though, it looks like a lot of two tight end sets that they might be running out there, and neither of these guys really actually being weekly targets. For New Orleans, John Juwan Johnson was the guy last week in the end zone, two touchdowns, but it's Adam Troutman that we're walking away with a little bit better feeling about this week. Johnson is going to be a red zone threat, and he is a guy that could score some touchdowns, and just with the touchdowns alone, he could end up being a hit weekly with over eight points. But Adam Troutman last week saw six targets, which led the team, and he played 82% of the snaps. So he was out there far more than what Juwan Johnson was. He's he's the guy. Now that he's healthy, he's back on the field and he's playing. He's the guy. We're back to watching him. For the Carolina Panthers, listen, Ian Thomas and Dan Arnold, ladies and gentlemen, still not a thing. Denver at Jacksonville, and Denver is going to bring my prize picks prop of the week for Noah Fant over on prize picks currently at 47.5 yards, and I am hammering the over on Noah Fant getting more than 47 and a half yards this week. He should be the number two target on this team now, right behind Cortland Sutton. And honestly, if Cortland Sutton isn't 100% healthy still, he could end up being the he could end up being the number one target. So let's hammer the over on Noah Fant. He is my prize picks prop of the week over 47.5 yards over on prize picks. And then for the Jacksonville Jaguars, they actually kind of look towards the Jaguar or look towards the tight ends a little bit more than I was anticipating last week. But it's not a thing that I'm going to be too worried about right now. Again, with all the wide receivers that they have there, I'm going to be looking towards those guys before I ever look to the tight ends. Last week, Tyler Conklin from Minnesota just was not involved in the passing game as I thought he would be. Most of the targets went to the wide receivers and to Cook. Again, Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen, KJ Bourne even saw nine targets last week. Dalvin Cook on the ground and through the air. So Chris Herndon, Tyler Conklin, neither of them are going to be starts for me right now. I'd love to see one of them get going. I just don't know when that's going to be. If it happens, we'll get on board, but we're not going to risk it as of right now. And then for Arizona, Max Williams, again, just so many running back or wide receivers to throw to. The tight ends in this offense really don't do anything. Atlanta at Tampa Bay brings my Manscaped must-watch matchup of the week. Don't forget, we're sponsored here on the Fantasy Headliners by Manscaped again this season. You can head over to manscaped.com and use our code word headliners for 20% off any of their great products. And again, they are my Manscaped must-watch matchup of the week because of the tight ends in this matchup. First off being Kyle Pitts. With Kyle Pitts, not a great start to the season and to his rookie career last year. But there are some things to be very encouraged about. Not only was he used on the line, but he was used in the slot and out wide quite a bit. He played more than 80% of the snaps and he had the most targets on the team. It just didn't turn into anything. If you give him the most targets on the team, it's not going to be too long before the dude just goes crazy. So even though it wasn't a great last week, a uh, great week last week, don't be discouraged and don't move on just yet. We talked about it at the beginning of the video, right? Rob Gronkowski was my big miss last week. And I told people when you decided to come back to the comments and say, oh, great miss, Kyle. I tried to explain to you all why. Rob Gronkowski, for me, there was two things that I was looking at. 
The first was his snap percentage. How often was he actually going to be on the field? With Antonio Brown, 100% into the offense now. Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, OJ Howard being healthy again. Cameron Brait still being there. My thought was is that Gron- Gronkowski, he's going to maybe be good in the efficiency department, but not the volume department because they're going to want to keep him ready to go. They're going to want to keep him fresh, and they're going to rotate him in and out. He played 87% of the snaps last week. I did not expect that. And that's the biggest reason why I was so wrong about him last week. Because he was on the field so darn much. And not only that, I was thinking to myself, with all these guys on the field, who's going to see the most targets? So is Gronkowski going to score two touchdowns a week? No, he's not. There's going to be some weeks that you start Gronk and he's just not going to perform because it's going to be Evans, Godwin, and Brown. Or maybe one of the running backs has a decent day. Or maybe Gio Bernard, maybe he gets worked into the passing game a little bit more. So just keep that in mind. Huge first week. I am not raining on the parade because Rob Gronkowski looks like the Gronkowski of old. I love the share of the snap percentages. As long as that keeps up, he's going to continue to be a top 10 uh, tight end. I fully expect that to happen. But again, that snap percentage was the biggest reason I missed last week. And now that we've seen it, we don't need to miss anymore. Dallas at the Chargers, and I'm back on the Dalton Schultz bandwagon. Last year, I wasn't a huge fan of the tight ends in Dallas because, again, you drafted C.D. Lamb, you had Amari Cooper, you had Michael Gallup, you've got Tony Pollard, you got Ezekiel Elliott. Kind of the same thing this year. People are like, oh, you're forgetting about Jarwin and Schultz. Wasn't really forgetting about anybody, but then all of a sudden we see Michael Gallup go down with his injury. That's one less, and then Dalton Schultz last week actually got six targets in the passing game. And he was used in the passing game a little bit more than what Jarwin was. So Dalton Schultz, if he is going to be that receiving tight end, if he's not really going to be relied upon as the blocking tight end, six weeks a target. If you can get six targets a week at the tight end position, you could potentially be a tight end one every single week. And now no Michael Gallup, knowing that they're going to continue to throw the ball a lot. This is definitely a great opportunity for Dalton Schultz and one that I'm willing to buy in right now. For the Los Angeles Chargers, I've got Jared Cook listed as a start this week, but if the targets don't transfer to Eckler soon, then Cook could be fantasy viable. He's going to be on the lower end of the starts for me this week because if they do look to Austin Eckler more, it's going to probably come from Jared Cook. So if he's not getting those five to six targets a week and he's not scoring, he's not fantasy viable. But again, it's going to depend on Austin Eckler. If they decide to give him another week, Jared Cook could see another decent week as well. Tennessee and Seattle and for Tennessee, Ferksker, Swaim, neither of them. I'm not going with them right now. First off, this offense as a whole just needs to get back on track. If that happens, it's going to be Brown, Jones, and Henry are going to be the guys to do it. Maybe at some point we see Ferksker help out, but it's not anytime soon. And then for Seattle, we're going back to Gerald Everett as the start. Will Disley saw a little bit more on the target share, but Gerald Everett is going to be a guy in the red zone. They're going to be looking his way a lot this season. And as I've mentioned, if you can score a touchdown at the tight end position, you can basically lock yourself in as a tight end one that week. And Gerald Everett is such a great red zone target. He's going to be really close to being in that area every single week. Kansas City, Baltimore, there's not really a whole lot to say right here. If you own Travis Kelsey, you start Travis Kelsey. And Mark Andrews, he didn't have a great week last week. But part of that was because the pass rush of Las Vegas. It was so good last week, Lamar just had trouble finding him. So not a great week for Mark Andrews. We're going to go back to him as a start, though. And we're just going to continue to trust that he's going to see more targets moving forward. For Detroit and Green Bay, holy targets for TJ Hawkinson last week. I told you all in the offseason, that was the guy. That was my target. I was skipping on those early round wide receiver or those early round tight ends. And TJ Hawkinson in the fifth round was my guy. Week one, he delivers. But I remember a couple of years ago where he delivered in week one and disappeared. I don't think it can be that way this year, though, because what else do they have, right? They don't have much else. So for TJ Hawkinson, he's going to be a start again. Robert Tunyon, that's one that I'm worried about, though. And, I mean, he was listed as a bust in my dra- in our draft guide. He was my bust at the tight end position. Week one didn't look great. Not going to completely poo-poo on this offense right now. But if it doesn't get turned around soon, Robert Tunyon's not seeing anything. And even if it does get turned around, is he going to be a guy that's going to help on a consistent basis? 
There you have it, Headliner Nation. My week two start and sit predictions for the tight end position. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe if you're new here to the Fantasy Headliners and leave a comment down below. Is there a specific guy that you're smashing into your lineup this week? Somebody you definitely need to get out. Let us know down in the comments. And don't forget, download prize picks, create a free account, use code word headliners and deposit 20 bucks. You're going to get into our September giveaway. Ladies and gentlemen, I love you all. Peace out. Stay safe. Stay healthy. I'll catch you all in the rankings videos. Have a good one.